For this video, we're going to look at type one and type two errors. And these are errors that might result when we perform a hypothesis test. And so what we're told here, here is that we're gonna determine a null hypothesis for our question of interest. And then we're gonna collect sample data and use that data to decide whether or not to reject our null hypothesis. Um, what we have to consider is that the null hypothesis is either true or it's not true. Um, and we are then going to make a decision either to reject it or not reject it based on the data that we observe. So that means that there are four possible outcomes and I've tried to show that here in a table. So um, along the top here, this is the, this is the reality. Okay, so in reality, the null hypothesis is either true or it's false. And then here's what we decide. So we're gonna decide either to reject the null or to not reject the null. And so what we have here is we have a table that shows us the, the types of cases that we could have. And we're gonna start with the two that are correct. So there are two cases here where we make a correct decision. So if the null hypothesis is in reality false and we, based on our data, decide to reject it, we have correctly rejected that null hypothesis. So that's one possibility. Um, another possibility is if the null hypothesis in reality is true and we decide not to reject it, then we've also made a correct decision. So what we're hoping for is that when we perform a hypothesis test that one of those two things happen. Um, but we have some other options also and those other options result in us making an error. So in reality, the, if the null hypothesis is true, but we, based on our data, decide to reject it, what we've done is we've made an error. And there's a specific name for that in statistics. It's called a type one error. Um, and so a type one error, um, I kind of mention it down here, is when we reject a true null hypothesis. And then a type two error is our other option, and you can tell that here means that in reality, the null hypothesis was false, but based on our data, we decided to not reject that null hypothesis. That would be an example of us making a type two error. And so in a type two error, we fail to reject a false null hypothesis. Okay, so those are the two types of errors that we could make. Um, we have some symbols to represent those types of errors. So a type one error, we're gonna use an alpha, so the Greek letter alpha to represent that. And then a type two error, we're gonna use beta to represent the probability of a type two error. Okay. And so what we're gonna come down to next is an example. So this example says that a group of doctors is deciding whether or not a particular patient has cancer. And we are told that the null hypothesis is that the patient does not have cancer. And then the alternative hypothesis would be um, that the patient does have cancer. Okay, and this goes along with our idea that we said the null hypothesis is usually testing no change or no difference from what's expected. And what we're asked to do is explain in words what it would mean to make both a type one error and a type two error. So we're gonna start with type one. So as a reminder, a type one error means that we reject a true null hypothesis. So that would mean that in reality, the patient did not have cancer but we reject it, right? So what we conclude that the patient does have cancer. And so in that case, right, a patient would not have cancer, but we would be telling them that they do. Obviously, um, we don't want that situation. A type two error in this case um, in general, a type two error is where we fail to reject 
a false null hypothesis. So if the null hypothesis is false, um, that means that the alternative is true, which means the patient does have cancer. So in reality, the patient does have cancer, but we conclude, um, we fail to reject that they do not. So basically we're concluding that they do have cancer. I'm sorry, we conclude that they do not. Um, because we are failing to reject the false null. So in fact, the patient does have cancer, um, but we're failing to reject that they don't have cancer, which means we are essentially um, saying that the patient does not have cancer when they really do. Okay. Um, as you can see, neither type of error is going to be good. Um, in medical examples, they actually tend to favor making a type 1 error because they would rather say that a patient has the disease that when they don't and then do further testing to make that decision. Okay, so when you're asked to evaluate a type 1 and type 2 error and explain what they mean, this would be an example of that situation.